Happy Monday, everyone. This is Charlene again from Lady Waiting 222's blog. And of course, our Monday mini devotional is today. So our title today and what we'll be talking about is when faith is lost. And our scripture will be Luke chapter 8, verses 24 and 25. I want to read two different translations for you, and then we'll just kind of highlight, talk about a little bit of things. Um, Wherever you are on the journey, this seems to be faith month. <laughs> I've been talking a lot about faith recently, and that's just because um, God has been stretching me in my faith. Prayerfully stretching you in your faith, because that's how we grow and mature as um, his children. So um, wherever you are on the faith journey right now, um, maybe your um, faith is waxing. Maybe you are um, losing faith in something or um, waiting on something to manifest or happen. Um, maybe you're waiting on uh, something to take place or happen and um, faith maybe needs a little bit of a boost. I just want to come alongside and encourage you today. Um, so Luke chapter 8, verse 24 and 26, the new, uh, the um, amplified version. I want to read the amplified classic version and then also the passion translation. Uh, and this is the story when um, a storm has come upon the sea where the disciples are traveling in the boat. And um, it says, And the disciples came and woke him, saying, Master, Master, we are perishing. And he, being thoroughly awakened, because Jesus was asleep, that says a whole lot, censored and blamed and rebuked the wind and the raging waves. And they ceased, and there came a calm. And he said to them, why are you so fearful? Where is your faith, your trust, your confidence in me, in my veracity, in my integrity? And they were seized with alarm and profound and reverent dread. And they marveled, saying to one another, who then is this that he commands even wind and sea? And they obey him. The Passion Translation reads this. Alarm, the disciples woke Jesus up and said, Master, Master, we're sinking. Don't you care that we're going to drown? How many times have you said that to God? Maybe, maybe not out loud, maybe so, or maybe in your head based on the circumstances and you literally feel like you're drowning in problem and circumstances. It's been one thing after the other, one thing after the other. And it's just like, you don't, you know, you feel like you're drowning. Um, with great authority, Jesus rebuked the howling wind and surging waves, and instantly they became calm. Then Jesus said to them, Why are you fearful? Have you lost your faith in me? Shocked, they said with amazement to one another. Who is this man who has authority over winds and waves that they obey him? Now, this is something that I just recognized as I was reading it this time is, thank God that the disciples had enough sense to wake Jesus up and ask him, don't you care we're going to drown? They cried out to him, essentially. Maybe he wasn't in the right uh, frame of mind. Maybe he wasn't in the right attitude or because they had been walking with him. So clearly they should have known like he does care, right? But the fact that they would even cry out and, and ask, you know, and let God know about these circumstances and talk to him about it, says something. And I hope that, that you're doing that in the midst of you feeling like you're drowning, feeling like you're perishing, uh, feel, feel like you're perishing, um, that everything is surrounding you, the storms, the winds, the waves of life are just coming at you all at once. I pray that you would cry out to God, that you would ask him, that you would talk to him about that, um, because that's something they did. Um, so that's one thing I want to highlight. And the second thing is I want to um, hone in on this one phrase. It says, don't you care that we're going to drown? Again, how many times have you asked Jesus that? How many times have you asked, Lord, don't you care? Don't you see what's happening to me? Don't you, don't you care about me? Don't you care about what's going on? What are you going to do about it, basically, right? Um, I know I've been there. I'm sure you have too. Um, but be encouraged and take heart. That um, losing faith in Jesus despite circumstances will make you think he doesn't care 
Our focus on our circumstances instead of keeping our focus and trust in him can shift our perspective and feed the lie that he doesn't care about us. But we know that's not true, right? Uh, that's the furthest thing from the truth, honestly, because he already proved to us how much he cares. He loves us more than anyone else ever will or could in this world. And he proved it when he died on the cross for our sins. But a lot of time when we're focusing so much on the circumstances, focusing on the, the, the trials that seem to be drowning us, that seem to be overtaking us, that seem to be overwhelming us and causing us to be fearful and scared, um, a lot of times it's, it's that focus on our circumstances versus what God is doing in our lives that can make all the difference. Trust and know that God sees you. He hears you. He knows exactly what's going on. If Jesus was asleep, that is a whole message in itself. The fact that he was asleep in the midst of a storm, in the midst of the winds and the waves around them, means that you should take comfort too, that if Jesus is asleep, there's nothing that you need to fear. Have you lost your faith in him? That's what he asked the disciples. Have you lost your faith in me, daughter, son? Why are you so fearful? Where is your faith? Where does your faith lie now? Where does your trust and your confidence in me? Is there any trust and confidence in me now? Ask yourself that question. And I pray that um, as you focus and move your focus away from the circumstances, as difficult as they may be right now, don't allow the circumstances to tell you or feed you or, or continue to perpetuate the lie that he doesn't care about you because he does. And instead of focusing on your circumstances, trust him. Ask him to shift my pers your perspective and not allow you to feed into that lie anymore. And know that he does care. He does care about you. He sees you. He knows. He proved it already. I pray that you all are blessed. Take heart, take courage in knowing that Jesus does care. He does care about you. And he sees and he will rebuke the winds and the waves if it was not uh, orchestrated by him as, as he did in this scenario. Um, but trust and believe that if, if Jesus is in the boat with you, if he's with you in the midst of it, look for him, cry out to him, ask him those questions and see how he responds. And I would also encourage you all to listen to the song, which has blessed my life and so many others, the blessing, um, whatever version, whoever you want to uh, listen to it by Carrie Job, Elevation Worship, whatever version, but there's a part in it. Um, in the bridge where it talks about he is for you. God is for you. God is for you. He's not against you. It may seem like it. It may seem like he doesn't care. It may seem like the circumstances are just too much to bear and you're losing your faith. God is for you. He is for you. He is for you. He is for you. And let that resonate in your heart and your spirit. Hold on to that. Play that song over, let it wash over you, let it minister to your heart and your soul and be encouraged. I pray that you all are um, strengthened this week. When your faith is lost, when your faith is hanging on by a thread, no, 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 no. That God is with you. He's for you. He is with you in the midst of whatever you're going through and um, he loves you. You be blessed. Y'all take care. Have a good week. Until we talk again, take care.